Hello and welcome to the Crowcast, everyone. I'm Second Soundwave. Here today, as always, I am with my good friend, Crow Sama. And not only is Crow Sama here today, but we actually have our first ever guest on the Crowcast in the form of UC Gundam, an up and coming Gunpla YouTuber. Hey, what's going on? Cool. So it's actually the first time we ever had a guest on this podcast. Yes, well, it is. It. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Cool. So, uh, basically, what we like to do is just you know talk and just you know discuss some things, usually re- re- revolving around Gundam. Uh, but is there anything else outside of Gundam that you possibly are into? Um. Well. I don't know, you know, I used to really have a lot of hobbies, kind of like a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type mm-hmm. deal. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to ask, Is are we keeping it family-friendly? Oh, no. What are we, what's, the, what's the deal here? Okay, <laughs> no. Cool. I just could, like, in case, you know, a couple of couple of colorful words, like, kind of slip out. I didn't know if you were going for that family-friendly, PG-clean ad revenue or uh, how you run things around here. But, um, anyways... Yeah, so I used to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, I used to run a, uh, uh, an old YouTube channel because I used to be into art, so I would do digital art tutorials, and those actually took off, but I just didn't enjoy what I was doing. So, uh, you know, that interest kind of faded, and I just really stopped posting on that channel. I think I had about 2,000 subscribers. Um, and That's not too bad. You know, I'd, yeah, it wasn't too bad. I got videos that had like 60,000 views, mm. but I just didn't really have fun. I didn't really have fun doing art anymore. So did you, um, like, draw Gundam and Mecha, or was it other stuff? N- no, this th- this was before I even had really discovered Gundam. Um, how I got into Gundam was basically, uh, it was kind of a funny story, because one day uh, I was just kind of browsing around Google, and something came up. I saw, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the 7-Eleven line of Gunpla, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I saw the 7-Eleven RX-78 too, and I was like, oh, yeah, Gundam's a thing that I've heard of before. So I want to check that out because at the time I had a, I, it was early last year, early January. I had a lot of free time. Um, cause I was only working part time and I was like, well, I, I kind of want something new to do. I might check this Gundam thing out. I didn't know anything about like grades or any, what kits were good or bad or like how any of it worked. I literally just looked up Gundam. I went on Amazon and I settled on the high grade Banshee Norn destroy mode as my very first kit. Oh, wow. It came about two days. It came about two days later, and I put it together with like a, I think the parts I didn't just pull off the runners. I just oh God. cut with the, <laughs> the little scissors on a Swiss Army knife, and that thing is still up on my shelf. It, it's lost its V fin, like the little crown it's got going on. It's probably lost a couple of pieces. I definitely watch. I don't. I don't know if you guys watched all the way through my gunplay guide that I just put mm-hmm. out. Um, but there was a, a little gag that I did where I was talking about basically the same thing about how I got that for my first kit and I I dropped the Wing Zero custom master grade box onto it for a gag and it actually off screen it actually did shatter and I lost some pieces <laughs> so I remember um, that yeah it's, yeah it's it's kind of a wreck right now but I still appreciate it for being my first kit even if it's not the best oh absolutely um I still yeah I, di- I didn't know anything about the show or where that came from it was like the the Banshee looks cool I guess um I enjoyed building it, even though it wasn't the best kit. Uh, and then I think after that, I didn't really build any kits. I picked up a high grade here and there from my uh, local mall. And then I went on a road trip with a friend. We went to the Mall of America, which is in, it's a couple states over. I live in Michigan. It's in Minnesota. Yeah. And we stopped at a Barnes & Noble, and there was like a master grade double O Quanta full saber. And I picked that up. That was my very first master grade. And then it just kind of went downhill from there after I discovered um, the people who are currently sponsoring my YouTube channel, uh, which is Galactic Mm -hmm. Toys. They have two locations by me, and I started just shopping there like crazy because they've got, they had great prices and a a bigger selection than anyone I've ever seen uh, anywhere carrying for Gunpla. Yeah, I I saw your store tour. It it looks insane. It literally looks like some of the stores that I've seen like in Japan and South Korea Mm -hmm. where it's just like an insane selection of kits. I've never seen anything like that in the US before. Yeah, and they used to have... Now, if you watch when I go to the second store... Uh, the wall they have the Gunpla on, they just restocked. Uh, when they reopened after the uh, you know the pandemic, uh, when they reopened, I went there the first day they were open to pick up the... Um, I went in there to find the high-grade 1144th Dendrobium because I remember they had two before they closed down. Uh, unfortunately, they sold those online after they closed, 
but they had the high grade mechanics. So I picked that up and I picked up a master grade camphor and they were telling me, um, well, yeah, we actually moved our gunpla from the one wall to the other because we're getting in so much more. We had to make space for it. So we had to rearrange the entire store. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty intense that they're, they're diving so far into it. Oh yeah. And I mean, they're not a small company either. They've, I don't know. Are you, do you guys, you guys obviously know Zaku Aurelius. Mm-hmm. They worked with him for uh, like a competition. I think they sponsored a competition. Okay. Um, do you guys know Child of Mecca, the Ye- person who does the um, Gunpla podcast with yeah. Zaku? Uh, I know him through that. that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's actually he's actually come to Michigan on business, and he worked with um, Galactic Toys. He did like a Gunpla customizing or Gunpla building workshop in store hmm. there. They paid for his hotel. And uh, they don't sponsor him. I'm actually the first YouTube channel that they've actually partnered with and sponsored. Nice. They've that worked with other creators right, before, but I, while yeah. I've been aware of them, I don't think I've really seen any other like YouTube YouTubers sponsored by them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, and that, that it's surprising. I mean, like I've I looked them up on YouTube, and nobody talks about their gunpla really. Like I've seen them mentioned in a Jobby the Hong video where he was looking at the. Metal Build Evangelion Unit 1, and he kind of looked at a listing for it, and it was just a link to their website. Mm-hmm. He hasn't really talked about them, but... Um, yeah, everyone talks about their Funko Pops. Nobody talks about their Gunpla, and I was talking to... Because I, I went to a meeting with the owner the other day. I went in store just to... Excuse me. I went in stores just to uh, like talk to him, meet with him, sit down, and discuss the terms of the sponsorship, because it's, it's still a new thing. We're still working things mm-hmm. out. Um... And he said, I asked him about that. I was like, how come nobody talks about the Gunpla? They just talk about the pop figures. And he said, well, we got our start selling Funko Pops. And we actually did so well that we have Galactic Toys exclusive Funko Pops, such as the, um, they have like a giant Broly uh, Funko mm-hmm. Pop that has like a bunch of, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really into Dragon Ball that much, but it's got like a bunch of like effect parts around them. He's going like Super Saiyan or something. I don't know what's going on, but they were telling me about that. They said, not a lot of people know uh, about our Gunpla. So okay. I'm excited to be able to promote that for them, and I'm excited for what they're offering me in terms of the uh, partnership. It's, well, it's, co- uh, it's pretty interesting. It's definitely coming at a great time just because you know, Gunpla is getting into more stores such as like Target and Hobby Lobby. Yeah. So it, right, Target, yeah, I have Hobby seen Lobby, that. GameStop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I've, I've seen people talking about Target's having Gunpla. I guess mine just must not have it because I looked all through the – Little model kits, Lego sections, all the toy areas and whatnot. I didn't see any, so it just must have. They uh, only just started stores. to roll it out in the last couple months. Okay. Yeah, it's the same thing with GameStop. Like so, yeah. mine didn't have it for the longest until like, you know, what, maybe like five or six months after. Yeah, and you you can find Gunpla on the GameStop websites, which is strange, but only select locations uh, will carry mm-hmm. it in stores. Like mine had. This was when I was first getting into actually watching the show. Mine had the Reborn 100 Zaku 2FZ, and I watched 0080 like right after I saw it. Went back to go get that, and it was gone, <laughs> and I was the only one they had. So mm. that sucked. Yeah. Yeah, they don't really carry a big selection anyways. They'll just put like five no, or six of them out. Mm-hmm. The most I've seen They'll in buy one like GameStop five or was six. the... They'll, uh, they'll, I, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say the most I've seen in one GameStop was just... um. When I went to the Mall of America, and they had a they had a big ass GameStop there, and they probably had like maybe ten high grade mm-hmm. kits there. Yeah, I found what GameStop tends to do is uh, it seems like they really uh, overstock and overbuy whatever kits they do end up getting, and then like a year later they clearance them down to like ten percent and just sell them all off that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess I mean like you know if you're looking for a random kit that GameStop might have, that would be a good deal mm-hmm. for you. I mean, there's uh, been a lot of GameStops kind of recently there. that have had, uh, like, $7 Destiny Gundams and, like, $5 Double O wow. Skies because they just can't get rid of them. Huh. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad at all. All right. Uh, so, you see, uh, why, like, yeah. what got you into the Gumpla scene then? Like, well... Um, you mean, like, YouTube-wise or just building or what are we, what are we talking yeah, about Yeah, I'll say, like, a combination of both building and uh, going into the YouTube well, building, I really like putting things together, whether that's like electronics or model kits or mm-hmm. anything. I'd only ever built one actual plastic model kit before, and that was when I was about like eight years old. I tried putting together a monster truck that needed glue, and I really hated it. But 
throughout my life, like ever since I was about two or three years old up until I was probably maybe 15 or 16, I, I was really, really into Transformers and really into Lego. And then I guess I just kind of stopped being into Lego and just kind of uh, tried to find like a different passion, a different hobby, different interest uh, for a couple of years uh, until I found Gunpla. And it really just kind of satisfies all my niches of, you know, a creative outlet. I can, uh, I really, it's really not competitive, but it can be, you know, like with customizations like Gunpla Builders World Cup and stuff. But I can really just work at my own pace with no pressure. And putting stuff together is fun. Uh, I like the connection that it has to the shows. I love the intricacies of the lore. I love the designs. I just love, like, you know, large robots and how much, uh, how much, uh, wh whatever you want to call it, like, how varied the selection of model kits mm -hmm. is. Like, I really feel like I'm never going to run never. out. <laughs> There's never really going to be, like, an end. I'm not that Dalong guy. I'm not going to be able to build every every gunpla kit there is out there, um, which is a good thing because I don't know what I'd do if I ever ran out. I guess I'd probably start actually customizing and learning how to paint mm -hmm. them. But um, as far as YouTube goes, uh, for about the first year that I was into gunpla, I just... I built and watched a little bit of the shows here and there. And, you know, I would watch people like I really liked, uh, you know, Soundwave. I really liked your Gunpla News series. Um, Thank you. And I would watch, yeah, no problem. I would watch Mecha Guy Kotsu. Obviously, he's like one of the biggest ones, mm -hmm. the English speakers. Um, I would watch him. Obviously, his videos would be on my feed all the time. Krosama, I somehow never came across your channel, uh, even though I'm like always searching for new gunpla content and it, it's hard like they're really it's weird because there really is like not a lot of competition or not a lot of people doing this in the english speaking community mm -hmm. uh they're either like it's like either not not to be like putting anybody down but like there's a lot of people out there with like unwatchable content and very very little like following so it's like very hard to find them you know i will say so this though a little... we have had a huge explosion of new gunpla youtubers in like this year yeah like yeah. you're one of like, yeah, like eight I'm, different YouTubers that I've seen just pop up in the last six months that are that are mostly yeah, doing like really quality content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like some of my friends on on YouTube, um, a guy who just got started is Noctis. Uh, let me let me find his Twitter. Noctis, where is he? Noctis underscore Gundam on Twitter. He just started doing um, videos. He's been consulting me in the in the DMs about like, hey, how does this look? How does this look? Um, just getting feedback and he's got two videos out right now. Um, I think he customized an SD Fenix and then he customized, I think the master grade wing zero custom, but his, his videos are good. And then you've got like, um, uh, like, like pay and coup. One of my friends, he, he puts out a lot of videos. He does, uh, transformers and gunpla mm -hmm. reviews and then, um, gunpla bro. I don't know if you've seen him around. He, he's on, he's on Twitter. Yeah, I've, I've seen him. Um, he's I've seen him uh, mostly on Twitter. Yeah, he doesn't upload that often. I think that's because he's busy customizing stuff. Um, he spends a lot of time doing that. But he's been doing that for about as long as I have. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one last guy who I really like is, um, let's see, Miniaturite. Chris, I don't know if you've seen him, but he's got a series ongoing on his YouTube channel where he's doing, uh, he's building a completely custom Master Grade Barbatos. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's posting update pictures. I think he's finishing it tomorrow, actually. Uh, he's been posting update videos, and he's been posting painting progress pictures on his Twitter. And it looks it looks really awesome. I'm really excited to see how it turns out because he's been working very hard mm -hmm. uh, on it all day. So, yeah, you're right. There are a lot of people coming out of the woodwork, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah and the more, crazy more part is every single one of those people you just mentioned were none of the people that I was even talking about when I said a whole bunch of new YouTubers yeah. were popping up this year. <laughs> Oh, for real? You got to put yeah, me onto them like though. Yeah, there's I'm like no looking... overlap. You mentioned like five right. or six people that were completely different from the five or six people I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we're done with this, you have to send me the people you're talking about so I can. Yeah, watch yeah. I'll definitely send videos. you some some, uh, some links for sure. Yeah, the the two yeah, main ones them. that just came around. Um, I know E A Gumpla. He's been out for a minute. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah he, he does good stuff. I love his mm -hmm. videos. I love his double O series he has going on oh, right yeah. now. And then you have um, what was the other one? The <sighs> Gun. Oh, you got um. I think I'm. Oh, the guy that did the new Gundam like, collab with him. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, it's like something Studio yeah, San Studio Pedro G. or something. Mm -hmm. Studio oh, G. oh, Geo San Pedro. Yeah, yeah. Geo San Pedro new new builds a gun play like the Wing Zero custom EW yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, his videos exploded. He got like millions mm -hmm. of views. It, it, yeah, it was like a million those, views those within like, like a month. 
I know. Yeah. I'm surprised that how well video Mike Gunplay that, guy uh, is doing. That Wing Gundam one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, my Gunplay guide that I put out, I thought that was maybe going to get a 1,000 videos because, like, all my videos that exploded on my last channel were all how-to mm-hmm. videos. And the algorithm seems to really like tutorial videos. But it's it's still constantly climbing. It, it brought my channel from 200 subscribers to now, like... Uh, one thousand one hundred and fifty and climbing mm-hmm. in about a week and a half. Nice. Yeah, and it really and... doesn't hurt that you know that video is literally the top result if you search Gumpla on YouTube, no matter yeah, what that's, your that's like trippy. search history is or anything. <laughs> I, yeah, I asked. I literally asked somebody in a different server. I said, "Have you ever seen a single one of my videos before I searched my channel?" They said, "No." I said, "Search Gunpla right now," and you went to YouTube, and he said, "Top result, UC Gundam, the ultimate Gunpla beginner's guide." I was like, "Holy shit, yeah. that is crazy." Yeah. It's been getting like a thousand to two thousand views a day. I'm like, damn! I'm literally already at two thousand hours of watch time. Like halfway able to be able to monetize, which is crazy. I've only been doing this for about four to five months. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look it up right now and say where it's at. And this podcast is gonna be going public in about a week. So if you're watching this at home, I would definitely recommend uh, doing this yourself when you hear this, um, so we can see just yes. how far this video has gotten. It right is, now, it, it is at. 13,000 views and it's still at the top yeah it's crazy and like right below it you see um studio g mm-hmm. yeah i love his videos yeah he, he i actually spoke so with much. him on a well i didn't really speak with him but i, I was kind of having a back and forth uh text conversation before i put out my review of the gym mm-hmm. the gym sniper 2 I was asking him, like, uh, advice on how to make an infinite white background, which is funny because, you know, like, I, I think I did an infinite white background for the two videos after that, and then after I, I made my review on the the mega size unicorn, that thing was so big I had to scrap the background, but then I kind of realized I kind of like having my cabinets as a background for my gunpla because it's not really that distracting, and it's a, it adds a little bit more character than just having a plain white background. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's why I kind of I set up my videos the way that I do. I always think that like yeah. a well, a like not like a messy messy environment, but like a reasonably well organized, like aesthetic aesthetically mm-hmm. pleasing kind of desktop kind of environment is much more pleasant to look at as long as it's not too distracting, as opposed to just a really kind of just blank white backdrop. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you don't want it to be too busy. You don't want it to distract from the subject. But exactly. it is, uh, it, it's cool to make it look interesting. Yeah, it gives it some character. It makes it so people can actually recognize your videos at a glance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on top of the people that I did mention, like there's there's even two more people who are uh, getting into the gunpla scene. Like there's this person... I don't know what his YouTube name is going to be, but in, on Discord, his name is uh, Genesis. He's been going back and forth about, uh, with me about, like, hey, uh, he's like, I'm thinking about doing YouTube. I don't want to make it too similar to your videos, but he's like, I really want to do this, this, and this. I've just been encouraging him. I'm like, man, you should you should definitely do that. You know, like, I'll be happy to see what you come up with and just giving him advice and stuff. And then my other friend, um, uh, what is it? His his display name on Twitter is Dances with Avas, and he's a cool guy. He he posts a lot of uh, cool stuff regularly on Twitter, like um, Master Grade data books for like the old classic Master Grades. Uh, oh, you cool. know how like the Master Grade manuals and stuff would have those uh, intricate illustrations. Oh in them. yeah, I like love that. those illustrations yeah, so much. Like my I my first older kid I built. Yeah, my first older kid I built was like the Goof Custom Master Grade, and I opened it up. I was like, I love these little like mechanical illustrations. They need to keep doing these. But he's been putting out. Um... <coughs> oh, you have to excuse me. I've got seasonal allergies right now, so my throat's really dry. Um, but he he just put out a private video he's been asking me to uh, give criticism on where he talks about, uh, it's called In Defense of the Leo, like the Leo grunt suit from Wing mm-hmm. Gundam. And he's just yeah. kind of talking about like why it's actually like a really good mobile suit and just all of its various merits. And I think it's a good video. He just put out a... Uh, a revision of that. So when that goes live, I could I could send it to you guys. You guys could check it out. He's uh he's actually doing pretty well for his first video. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So it's it's cool, you know, like seeing all these people getting into the gunpla scene is like I don't even care. Like oh, it's more competition. I don't I don't see anybody else in the uh, gunpla scene as competition. I just want to coexist with everyone. And I'd rather see more I'm, good content than competition. Yeah, yeah. it's like I want to see people putting out good stuff. And I want to be able to, like, 
I don't really have much of a platform right now, but I want to use the platform I have to uplift the people making good content so we can have more good content on YouTube for Gunpla. And we don't just have just a cycle of videos from like Mecca and Zaku, not to knock either of them, but it's just like, I want more than just mm-hmm. the top two big people. You know? Yeah, exactly. And it's nice to have more other YouTubers that aren't just like, the same yeah. as Zaku Aurelius and Mecha Code, who that are doing different things that have different styles that make different types of mm-hmm. content. Yeah. Because for a yeah, long yeah, yeah. time, there really was a lack of that on YouTube. Um, back when mm-hmm. I got into the mm-hmm. hobby around 2013, there okay. was not a lot of Gunpla YouTubers, and they basically all did the exact same kind of video. Yeah. Right. Where it's just like, welcome to the Gunpla Review. Today we yep. are going to be taking a look at the RX-78 II from 0079, high grade. And that's the, why here's I started making how far YouTube the videos. Can move. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, it's like I wanted to not, like, I don't want to overshadow or overstep anyone. I want to coexist with everybody. But it's like I wanted to add my own style to reviews. I find it, I, I don't care about my numbers. I, like, ideally I'd like to get to a point where I could support my hobby with my channel which is already it's it's already starting to happen with the You're sponsorship deal that I have. Yeah, right. It's it's happening way faster than I expected, but I don't really care about the views. I literally just do it because I have a great time doing it. I have a lot of free time and it's very fun for me. It's my favorite thing to do right now and I, I feel great whenever I put on a new uh ugh, a new video. I tripped up over my words there, but you get the idea. Yeah, so uh, is is this something that um is there certain milestones that you have for maybe your skill sets like you mentioned you kind of mentioned you want to increase painting at once at one point, but yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Were you continuing? Oh, I mean, was that no, the question? That <laughs> okay, I just didn't want to be like uh, talking over you uh, or jumping the gun. Anyways, yeah, I would love to. Um, I would love to learn how to paint. I have an airbrush. I just don't have any paints. Mm-hmm. I want to learn how to do custom scribing, which is actually perfect because. Uh, my sponsor just hooked me up with I don't know you ever heard of the Madworks brand yeah. of chisels? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah they those just hooked are really me up popular. with a uh, like the Madworks. They they hooked me up with a good standard chisel tip size and the uh, the one the the handle where you can swap the chisel tips in mm-hmm. and out. They hooked me up with one yeah, of those for nice. free, so that's pretty cool. Uh, those and I would good like chisels. to you know, yeah, like custom scribing, custom painting. I want to do um, something like I want to learn how to use plot plates, and I also have. A 3D printer, so I can make custom mm-hmm. parts as well. Nice. Yeah, the uh, the scribe scene that's like really uh, booming right now. Like I'm seeing a lot more people is, dive yeah. into it. Yeah, it is. All right. Uh, so, is there any like particular kits that you're uh, wanting to aim for to do customization before you even try to build it? Like things that you kind of held um, off on. What do you mean? Like any that I. Any have any that I have like my eye on that I want to do custom? Yeah, up. or it's like, hey, like there's this master grade kit I really want to get, but I don't want to build it until I have the skill set mastered, and then I'm going to dive into it. Oh well, I mean, I'm totally okay with just being a snap builder in general, and I feel like once I get a little bit bored of snap building, that's when I'm really gonna, that's when I'm really gonna pursue customs. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Like, there's no kits right now that I feel like I want to just have custom. I'm really okay with having them snap built, even if they look like crap. And then if I want to do a custom, I would definitely buy a second one of that kit. Not only because I'll already know how it works, uh, so I'll have a little bit of an easier time working with it. But also just because I want to have, like, a snap built version and a custom version. Uh, I guess a kit that I would want to customize first, one that I kind of had a vision for, was I, I wanted to do, like, a like a full armor just a zaku 2 not like not like the psycho mm-hmm. zaku from thunderbolt or something but like like just something that's meant to be on the ground and it's got like kind of akin to the chobam armor you see on the nt1 alex from 0080 uh like maybe give it you, you know how they have the l-shaped shoulder yeah. shield i was thinking about sizing that up to like a large full scale kind of akin to like a riot shield mm. And maybe putting some, you know how like the the Giradoga has got those things that look like the uh, oh what are those called the little the it's not oh, like a the, like a style hand grenade Sturm like the things that are on a Sturmfaust yeah. yeah like the Giradoga has got the Sturmfaust like maybe put some Sturmfaust or some uh, weaponry behind that and then I wanted to uh, I definitely wanted to put like some kind of big fuel tanks on his back like uh, going upright instead of pointing out away from mm-hmm. him just kind of make him look like a big heavy like war machine there is that, that was kind of 
Yeah, let's see. They have the uh, the high grade Zaku. I think it's the F three thousand from uh, Beginning G. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's okay. a fairly rare F2000, kit. F two thousand. I'll send a pic. Yeah, it, it's a fairly rare kit, but it is really really thick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take a look at it. I don't know. That was just what I had toying around my head uh, as far as like my first custom mm-hmm. went. Um, but I wouldn't be opposed to just. Oh wow, yeah. You know, I was kind of thinking something like that, but with that big riot shield looking thing and a big fuel tank oh, yeah. on the back. But of course, with the Zaku two, just the the green color scheme. Okay. Yeah, I mean that'd be a perfect um, kit to to work on, especially that it's a high grade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd want to start off with high grade just to practice the techniques. Mm-hmm. Of like weathering, painting, scribing, panel lining, decals. I mean, I'm I'm good with decals, but um, do that and then work up uh, to more complicated things. Mm-hmm. Like um, one kit, I really do want. I do see myself giving a paint job to because I feel like it does need it. Uh, is the high grade one one forty fourth dendrobium, which I actually do have coming in the mail. That's coming. Uh, the that's the big one, like the three foot long oh, one. Wow. Uh, that's com- That's coming in the mail Monday because New Type HQ, they just restocked mm-hmm. and they got four of them in stock and I grabbed one of them. Hey, that sounds like a great way to transition into our sponsor segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so guys. I was waiting for you to say that. Yeah. I, actually, I was thinking about it in the beginning. I was like, we didn't even introduce the uh, the sponsor. How dare we? But So if you want to get any kind of Gundam kit or even like a metal build, an Ava meta build, or if you want to go into something more of Hello Kitty because Solo Chagokin has Hello Kitty, you can go to NewTypeHQ.com and you can use either slash Krosama or slash Second Soundwave in order to get yourself 10% off your first purchase. Those links will be in the description. Mm -hmm. As always. Oh yeah, and don't forget they do that uh the free shipping if you are like me and spend obscene amounts on Gunpla. Uh if you spend over like a hundred on an order, they do free shipping, right? Oh they change it to a hundred yes. now? I think so because it used um, to be like seventy nine. Yeah, it's ninety nine. Okay. Oh, okay. Something over something over a certain price amount you get free shipping, which is nice because stuff like DHL is like a hundred and fifty bucks right now. Yeah. Like yeah, I never use DHL for domestic stuff. Yeah. Um, there's also the uh, Equal Justice uh, Initiative, so the uh, hashtag Build Equality. Um, th- basically, stickers, and it does help for um, you know donations. So if you do want to yeah, get some... Yeah, it's a donation drive. Yep. So if you... Oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I'm still waiting on my stickers to come in the <laughs> Same. mail. Same. I, I, I mean... I ordered them day one. I mean, that um, the Phoenix Gundam one, that I think is like a holographic sticker. The, yeah, the hollow mm-hmm. sticker. That looks so cool. Yeah. That's gonna look yeah, I don't know really who good. does the art for their stickers, but they look fantastic. They do. They're like they're almost like SD, but they're more true to the normal proportions. It's just like the normal. It's like when you see somebody put an SD head on like a, a high grade mm-hmm. kind of. They're a lot like them. the. Uh, there's a game actually called SD Gundam Cross Race that has that kind of proportion to the designs. Yeah, you know what they? You no, know, they remind me of the Gundam Converge series. Mm-hmm. I love those. Oh yeah. I have the little the little Gundam Double X Converge sitting up on top of my PC. I'm looking at them right now. Well, those are great figurines. It's so cool to see Bandai actually continue one of those candy toy lines for more than two waves without canceling it. <laughs> yeah, they're really cool. They carry them at Barnes and Noble. I like to pick them up when I go. Yeah, I wish they had more um, like articulation with the Converge because I, I do like them, but I, I wish like there was at yeah. least some more of a hip joint or something. Because I don't want I don't want to stand yeah, it right there. I want to I want to play with it. I feel like yeah. at the size they are, adding more joints would just break up the sculpt too much. It that, could, that's yeah, true. That's, that's true. Now, something I did pick up uh, at a Barnes & Noble, <laughs> uh, if you don't mind me talking about it. Have you guys ever heard of the G-Frame kits? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I Oh, God, I picked up a G-Frame Sazabi, and it was, um, uh, it's not good. I don't like it at all. Yeah, I haven't heard anything good about it, and I think that's why it's probably discontinued right now. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I so was... which? So did you get the one that has like the armor on the static frame? Yes, it's like it, think of it kind of like an early real grade where you've got the pre-assembled inner frame, and then you just put shit onto it, um, or kind of like kind of like a very 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 cheap high res, mm-hmm. where it's like it's like an action figure and you pop the armor on. Now, yeah. The funny so here's thing the thing. Was, I don't know if you know this about the line, but 
the way they did the G-frame kits, they would actually do like yeah. two separate models. So one would okay. be the armor on a static frame, and the other would be a posable inner frame with the weapons, and you're supposed to buy both and combine them. Damn. The one I got was, um, it was a posable inner frame with all the armor and weapons. Hmm. That's weird. I yeah. didn't know they released them that way. Yeah, no, the, fun the funny thing was, um, when I opened the box, all the parts were separated into, like, sealed sealed little plastic bags, right? Yeah, because it's not a model, um, it's a candy toy. Right, you're right, it's a candy toy. Um, not only did they have, like, actual nubs on them, like, if you did, like, just a simple, a simple snip at the gate, oh, uh, and, yeah. like, just did not clean anything, it had nubs on it, but also... I don't know what was going on if somebody at the packaging factory or like the whatever wherever it was made if they got bored and decided to just start putting putting it together but like it was like half assembled when I opened the box That's weird. like half the armor was on it and it was actually assembled in the wrong order I had to take all the parts that were already on it off in order to put other stuff on so I was just real I, I had a real bad experience with it and it's it was just too fiddly um, and I really wouldn't recommend it uh, to, I wouldn't recommend anyone pick mm -hmm. it up. I would rather just have like the high grade Sazabi. Yeah, That's you gotta get yourself a real grade Sazabi. Oh, I still do. I literally only have one real grade right now, and that's the Tall Geese. But I love that kit. That's a solid kit. I want to get Actually, one of those. It looks so cool. I have I have two real grades. Only one is built. I got the Zagok in my last gunpla haul. Oh, that's another really good one. Yeah, and you know, there's not really many reviews out that I've seen. Well, most Xeon kits, I think, um, that are not like Sazabi or Zaku, those really don't get covered too much online. Yeah, it's more I because think, the like, real grade Zagok came out before we had reviewers like Zaku Relius reviewing literally every single thing that Bandai puts out. Mm -hmm. So there was just kind <laughs> yeah. of back then people would really only review like the super super popular kits. Yeah, so that's probably where a lot of that comes from. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, if you're gonna get into any series, uh, I mean, Double O is definitely a good one because it's it's fairly competent, and the uh, season mm -hmm. one got, has a really good flow of uh, plot and character yep. development. Um, Abio is another good one, just because it's very uh, new and famous right now. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest, I just can't get into Abio. I've watched it like I've watched the first like five episodes like three times, mm -hmm. and it just I I. I will admit I have a very short attention span for uh, TV shows, which is a, a like it's that's a problem of mine, not the TV show's fault. But I just couldn't really bring myself to like care about the characters. Like I saw the one mobile suit fight, I was like, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'm a little invested in uh, Tekadan, whatever they got going on. But then I just put it down after like episode five. Every time I try watching it, and I just never pick it back mm -hmm. up. There's, there's some so. really good battles later on. Um, if you ever decide to get yeah. back into it. I mean, one day I am gonna give it a good solid watch. I don't. I don't ever tell anyone like I hate IBO. The worst I'll say is I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of it. But I always make sure to clarify like I have not watched the whole thing, so I don't have a well formulated opinion. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Love the mobile suit design. Don't really care for the character design. Story is kind of not really capturing my interest that much. But one day I will power through mm -hmm. it. So, so aside from uh, Unicorn and uh, IBO, have you watched any of the other of, of the other anime? Oh well, let's see. I watched a couple episodes of 0079. I actually, um, I have a. Uh, I don't know if I uh, should talk about that. I don't know how how uh, how legal uh, that oh, wait, is. Oh, 0079. Um, I, yeah, I've got a Google. We can Drive edit it out if it's like, too sketchy. I've got a okay. I got a Google Drive folder of like every 0079 episode in like high quality mm -hmm. so i've been watching it through that somebody linked me to it and i was like oh cool now i don't have to either buy the entire thing i don't really feel like watching the movie trilogy i want to watch the original show um i will like, say though I, the I movie trilogy is a way easier watch than the show absolutely and also yeah, it's just technically kind of like tomino's preferred version because he makes like some little edits and stuff to it that kind of make it okay. flow better with zeta gundam mm -hmm. but yeah like yeah, if you just want to quickly power through it the movies are the way to go mm -hmm. Yeah, I might have to actually end up doing that instead because now that now that I'm not only making videos for myself but also for my sponsors, I'm gonna have uh, less time, even less time to watch TV shows. And I'm already just basically I wake up if I'm if I'm not spending time with like other people, like in my day to day personal life, I just wake up and I uh, just start working on videos and then I just do that all day and then I go mm -hmm. to bed. Mm -hmm. So I don't really have time much time to watch the shows. But other than that. Uh, I watched 
Double O Eighty was really the anime that got me in love with Gundam. And oh, I adore Double O Eighty. Yeah, me too. That's I have the Jim Sniper too. I've got the Alex Master Grade. I've got the Camp for Master Grade. The RE100, Zaku Tukai. Before I watched that, I actually, I'm not going to lie, I hated the Zaku design. I only thought that Gundams looked cool. I was only in it for the designs. I was like, I like sharp angular designs. I don't like the, Same. the bubbly, round, more organic look of the Zaku. I think it's a stupid design. And then I watched 0080 and I was like, seeing these things in action actually makes me really like mm. them. And that's how it's basically been with any, any single... Um, and so it's basically been with any single design that I've really hated. Um, it's just when I see it on the screen, I really hate it a lot less. And that happened with the Zaku, and it's actually become one of my favorite designs like of all time, which is kind of funny. I think it's really funny that you mentioned that, because when I first got into Gundam, I actually felt the same way about it. And it was actually the right. Zaku Amazing from Gundam Build Fighters that really turned okay. me around on Zakus and made me love them. Yep, same. <laughs> yeah, I need, I, need, I need to watch Build Fighters. I actually picked up like three or four Build Fighters kits in my... Uh, current backlog now that I'm gonna yeah and you picked some good ones too yeah I picked I also picked a bad one I got the um the Fumina Mrs. Lee Hong Rinko oh the Loen Rinko yeah or whatever yeah however it's pronounced um I picked up the Rinko one where it's like the ship girl um on your on your uh on your recommendation actually because of how bad yes it is. because I it's a bad kit but it's gonna make great YouTube content I know. I think it'll be really fun to review. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to tearing it apart. Actually, I have I have two reviews in the works right now. I'm not releasing them all right away because I'm trying to build up a backlog of videos. So basically, like I'll have a bunch of unreleased videos in a folder, and if I start falling behind on production schedule, or if I'm working on like a uh, a big project, like say, um, say my sponsor has a bunch of kits for me to cover, and I have to work on those but it's taking a while because I want to put up quality videos. If I'm taking too long to put out a video, I can just pull a video out of the backlog and upload it so people aren't wondering where my content is if I'm previously uploading regularly, if, they, if that makes any mm -hmm. sense. You know, you can yeah, also so upload videos ahead of time unlisted and then make them public when you want to publish them. Oh, true. I guess I could do that as well, but I feel like I just like have them in a folder. Um, let's see. But yeah, like uh, that, that Gunpla guide took me an entire month to put together. Uh, it doesn't help that I'm a really bad procrastinator, but it no, was that a lot sounds of about right. That's about how long about a video it. like that would take to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of research. I wanted to make sure I fact checked everything, and I want to make sure, like, um, you know, anything I wasn't sure of, I asked other people. And it took a long time to film all that B-roll and edit everything together. Mm -hmm. That was probably the most yep. time-consuming part. Yeah, the editing is always pretty much the most uh, time-consuming. It's, it's. Yeah. I, I wish I could just bypass editing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm always looking for ways to streamline my editing yeah. workflow. Yeah, I know eventually it's going to get to a point where uh, I, I'm going to do all my filming in one day, and then like the other days are going to have to be just uh, just the edits. Yep, that's what I do. I um I film my video first because excuse me allergies. Um, basically how my my video process works is I build the kit and I base a general opinion off of my experience with the kit. And kind of use that to determine where my video is going to go from there. I'll write down a... I never do a script. I completely just riff. Mm -hmm. And um, if there's... I will make sure, like, if there's important things, like, we have a really... Like, like in the NT1 Alex, like the Master Grid Alex 2.0, the wrists. I would make sure I, co like, cover the wrists. Mm -hmm. Be like, bro, <laughs> loosen the wrists up. You don't want to snap the wrist pegs. Yeah. Um, if there's important things like that, I'll write them down in a bullet point to make sure I absolutely do not skip over those. But everything else, I'll just be like, if I'm doing the segment, because I do the voiceover after the filming uh, with my mic in post. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'll just watch the video clip and I'll just completely riff on like uh, how I feel about the kit, my experience with the kit, completely unscripted. Um, so it usually takes me, I could probably knock out like a 10 minute review in a day and a half. Mm. If I start in the morning and work all day, um, but yeah, it's it's a very it's a very uh, kind of loose process, mm -hmm. which I which I really enjoy. Yeah, and it's it's like uh, you know you're so in, uh, new into it, so you know maybe there's a lot of different mm -hmm. um, paths that you won't gonna want to take with your channel. So right, you know, just experiment. I'm still carving. I'm still carving out a niche for myself, still finding out what I like to do. Mm -hmm. When I started uh, making videos, my very first video review was on the Master Grade um, Sazabi Verka. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and I really, well, first of all, I bit off more than I can chew trying to review that kit. Uh, second of all, I really just didn't know what I wanted to do for my videos. I tried adhering way too much to a formula, mm. and that just was way too restrictive. So you, if you watch from, like, uh, my first video to my current videos, not only does the production quality get better because I didn't know anything about filming or shot composition or anything like that um, when I started. And I'm just slowly taking that in and learning as I go. You'll see the, the video production get better, but you'll also notice that like, it just seems more natural, mm -hmm. I feel like, and more comfortable as it goes along. Yeah, definitely. The biggest thing I remember about watching your uh, your Sazabi video was that the volume was at like yeah, 10%. Yeah, I did have a problem with audio mastering, but I think I figured it out now. Uh, so, is are you good to so, it? No, I was just going to add. Gonna, <laughs> I was just going to like see if I could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say, um, so is there anything in the future that you're really trying to, um, to achieve um, in terms of maybe a style or even a goal for um, your audience? Like, you know, maybe there's uh, maybe like a certain uh, technique that you want your audience members to to really learn from you or maybe there's a certain message that you're trying to get out with your videos yeah well i mean my main goal is like i'd like to cultivate an audience of people who are just really passionate and invested in the hobby and i want to be an accurate and a consistent reviewer mm -hmm. But I also want to be like entertaining, like you know, you know, Jobby the Hong. He's very high energy, very entertaining. Yeah. He's a very big source of inspiration for me. And I'm not trying to like cramp his style, steal, steal his ideas. But I kind of want to go for a vibe like mm -hmm. that, where it's just it's very entertaining, very fun to watch. But you still, you still have that accurate, consistent information in there. And I guess if like I had a main message that um, I wanted people to take away from it would would be, be like. Uh, you know, just take it easy and have fun and, like, chill out. Do it at your own pace and don't knock other people down. Like, you see people going around like, oh, you got shitty nub marks on your kit. Clean your nub marks. You you, you fucking idiot. Clean mm -hmm. clean up your nub marks. Your, your build is shit. It's like, bro, people are just trying to chill. People are just trying to have fun. Some people don't even want to uh, clean up their nub marks. Yeah. And it's like the, the whole point is just to do what you want. Once you buy the model kit, it's yours. You can, you can light it on fire and put it in a dumpster and forge the melted plastic uh, into like a chair if you wanted to. I don't care. Do do what you want. The whole point is to have fun. Mm -hmm. That's that would be the main takeaway. Just have fun. And you know, you know people the, the only problem that I see in the gunpla community is just elitism. People are elitism about the people are elitist about their tastes in the shows. They're elitist about their tastes in the model kits, and they're elitist about how they build things. Well, you're not a real gunpla builder because you didn't forge a, a a weapon out of pure shit or something uh, for your for your customized gunpla. You just panel lined. I was like, who cares? Maybe they're learning. Maybe this is like their second model kit. You should be. You should use your platform to always uplift others instead of tear other people down. Yeah, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that there's just two. There, it's a small community of mm -hmm. people with very different ideas of how they want to do the hobby, and because yeah. it's there's not that many people in the community, everyone just kind of gets lumped together that would normally be out doing their own things. So you end right. up with like the super hardcore customizer guys. In with the guys that just want to chill out and snap build your kits, and you get all this kind of headbutting and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I get it. And I mean, like, I feel like if I was really into customizing, I would take that passion, and instead of trying to put others down, a more constructive use for that passion would be to, to educate people. Be like, I love customizing. I think that it's the best way to do gunpla. So instead of shitting on people who don't do it, I would like to educate them and try to teach them how to do it because I feel like they would enjoy it too. But at the same time, you understand some people just don't want to customize their gunpla. Some people are happy being snap builders. You know, yep. some people, you know, you might, some people might be hesitant to customize because they think it's harder than it is. So you could take those people and be like, hey, it's not that bad and I'll teach you because I like it. You can, you can go two different ways with your passion. You can let your passion turn you into an asshole who you, know, you turn your passion, passion into an ego and use that to fuel your elitism and push others away. Or you could use your passion for good and use it to inspire and uplift other people. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and it's mostly in where I've noticed the Facebook community as well as on uh, YouTube. That's where mm-hmm. a lot of the kind of more just assholes kind of dwell. But um, if you really go to like Instagram, I think Instagram is one of the best places for Gunpla. Just I think so too. Yeah, I, I, I mean, can't recall ever yeah. seeing any kind of negativity coming from someone. I don't have Instagram, but like I've seen Gunpla Instagram, Facebook, or not Facebook, uh, like Instagram pages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gunpla Instagram pages, and they they all seem fine. Uh, one place I really don't like, and I've been wanting to talk about this with some people for a while, is uh, the Gunpla subreddit. Oh my god! Fuck that place! Fuck off, Gunpla <sighs> subreddit. Yeah, that's uh, that sure is a thing. Mm-hmm. Now, like the people in there are not necessarily bad, but like the mods in there are so up their own asses, yep. like. Let me tell you something. They have these vague ass rules that they can enforce. Like, you you can promote your, you can post your own videos, but only if you're an active member. Well, what the fuck does it mean to be an active member? How many posts am I supposed to make before I've fulfilled this uh, completely random number of acceptable posts? It's ten percent. It's ten percent. I think they. I believe I've seen an expanded version of the rules for the subreddit where they say it's like something like a 90% 10% split between promoting other content and active posts in the community. Yeah, I I don't know like I I asked like one of my first posts in the subreddit was I was asking in like the Q&A thread I said how how much uh how much do I have to post in here to be considered active enough to post videos without them being taken down they're like there's no real figure we you just have to be active and like okay the Gunpla subreddit yeah, was the only... Yeah, they shouldn't have said that. There is an actual yeah. number that they have quoted in the rules. Yeah, well, like, that that would have been helpful, but for this entire time, I've been under this impression that it's just some vague, vague... Uh, I can't think of the word, but it's just, like, vague random number uh, that could really just be loosely enforced by any moderator who's like, I don't feel like you're active enough. Uh, I'm deleting your video. And it's even like, why does it matter? It's not like I just made a random account to start spamming my videos and shilling myself if i want to post a video that's still gunpla content it's a review it's content it's quality content yeah exactly you know i'm not trying to i'm not trying to be up my own ass but it's like i'm still contributing to the topic of the board i'm not taking away from anything else i'm adding to it you know yeah and so like oh sorry i'm not trying to interrupt you if you wanted to add something well yeah because it, it wasn't even just the mods, but even a lot, like a lot of the personnel that's in the group, um, a lot of them do like mm-hmm. troll or they'll make uh, passive aggressive comments that kind of want they want you to question your own quality build. Yeah, like um, when I first started, because I don't really do unboxing videos anymore. I've started lumping those into my speed builds. Like I'll just do a quick showcase of all the runners that are in the box and then build the kit. Mm-hmm. I've kind of done that because. Um, I just don't feel like doing unbox. I don't feel like unboxing videos are really. There's not really room for me to be creative at all. It's just showing off what's there. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah, really I never about. liked doing unboxings. Yeah, I started doing them a few of them, and I was like, uh, I'll, I'll do them so I can have videos to put out. But I just really kind of was like, I, I can just lump them into the speed builds. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not. They're really not room interesting for to it. make, and they're not interesting to watch. Nope. Yeah, like so. I I posted a uh, I posted a video. Like one of my very first videos, I think it was like unboxing the Goof Custom, which the Goof Custom Master Grade was my second review ever. So it was like my third video. I was like unboxing the Goof Custom. And I posted it to Reddit just asking, like, hey, how is my quality? You know? And somebody, some, some smarmy asshole came in and he was like, um, actually, um, actually, this is, this is basically falls under the no haul posts, uh, rule, uh, because it's an unbuilt kit and basically unboxing videos are shit because if I wanted to see what was inside of a box, I would just go to dalong.net. It's like, okay, I didn't fucking ask if you care about the... The unboxing, I said, is my video quality good? I didn't need your whole spiel on how you think unboxing videos are useless. Mm-hmm. Stop being an asshole about it for internet points. Yeah. Fuck off. That's, that's how so, people uh, on Reddit So, was that your first day on Reddit? Uh, that was about, like, my first week. I've been on Reddit before. Just I made a, an account for the UC Gundam uh, kind of social sphere. Uh, but I, I, it was like yeah, the I wouldn't even bother with Reddit, honestly. I don't. Oh, I don't anymore because I had my last drive. I, I had a run in with this like one moderator. I, I won't name him just not because I care, uh, but just because I, um, I don't know his name. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, and I honestly don't care to can't remember. Can't be fucked to remember. <laughs> yeah, I can't be fucked to remember. Um, but like he deleted my posts before, but then he left like, he left some of my videos up. Like I, I posted some videos. 
And the Gunpla subreddit was the only one I've ac- I was active in. Like I was going around giving people advice and like what kits I recommend and just like commenting on other people's posts, upvoting. I was pretty active and it was like there was a couple weeks where like I didn't necessarily post or comment on anything because I was really busy. And it's like just because I wasn't active in those two weeks doesn't mean I wasn't still an active member of like the community. Like you can you can go through my post history and see how much I've posted in there. Mm-hmm. Um and I, like I said, at the time, I wasn't aware of like the uh, the that percentage split of posting. It was just still uh, vague to me. But I I posted like a video, like a review, a link. To, it was like a I think it was like the high grade Justice Gundam review, which I thought was pretty nice because there are literally no reviews of that. Uh, it's like oh yeah, that was a great video. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that was like it was like the the 2014 re-release, like the recolor version for the 10th anniversary of Gundam Seed. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no reviews on that that are like that I found. Um, and I was like, okay, this will be cool. People will enjoy this. And I posted it there and they took it down. And I was like, like they gave this, this dude sent me like a passive aggressive message. Like you didn't follow the reels. You should get taken down. Like, bro, this is quality content. That is like something that has not been covered before. You're more concerned about taking it down. Cause it doesn't fucking, I, I haven't made enough posts to satisfy your fucking, uh, little number that you have in your head of how many posts I should make. Uh, and, you 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 don't want to have this review of a kit that's basically never been reviewed in video form up because you you're just too hung up on on the rules you're so far up your own ass and i was just like bro look at my fucking post history and he's like i did and i was like then you would have seen that i am active in the sur- the subreddit all the goddamn time and he didn't fucking respond i was like i'm done with this place mm-hmm. fuck yeah. off reddit in general gets really pissy about youtubers uploading videos to their site Like, there's r slash videos, and, like, there's some other subreddits where they're okay with it, but most of subreddit just has, most of you Reddit just has, like, this weird kind of vendetta against YouTubers. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I even, like, like, I I will say I don't mind the people in the Gunpla subreddit for the most part. Uh, Like, I've run into way more nice people than I have uh, bad people. But it's just, like, overall, I I do not like it, and I won't pretend to like it. I don't like it at all. I'd like to get to the point where I have, like, my own subreddit, because I think that would be cool. So I could still post my videos to Reddit and get a little bit of the Reddit audience, but then I wouldn't have to deal with r slash Gunpla. That's not even worth it, to be honest. Yeah? Um, like, yeah, as, as far as, like, social media outreach goes, there's not really much you're going to gain from having a subreddit unless, you, unless you're using it as a way to, like, you know, ask questions of your audience or have them submit content yeah. or mm-hmm. something, but then they can just do that on Discord as well, so there's not really a yeah. point to it. Yeah. I do that, do that on Discord and then, like, on Twitter. I'm actually thinking about doing, like, a Q&A for a 1,000 subscriber special. Either that or I was going to unbox and build the uh, Dendrobium that's coming Monday, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Something special. Because, you know, there are... There's one. There's one single review in English of the high-grade 1144th Dendrobium, and it's by Prime92. <laughs> Oh, she, yeah, she, I think she covers like pretty much everything. I so. thought, yeah, she does. And it's like I, I thought appreciate. Kakarot did a video on it too, though. Maybe when I look it up, I don't see it though. Dendrobium. But it's like it could just be completely flying under my radar because, like I said, Crosama. Like I never, um, I never found your channel until I started talking to Soundwave. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had been looking for just like other gunplay YouTubers by, besides like the big normal usual people because I wanted more variation in content it could be i started looking for people and it's like i never saw you i never saw anybody else there was like people who their last uploads were like years ago or they don't really upload anything mm-hmm. at all or it's just completely not quality at all like not very watchable yeah it could be the uh, algorithm because i'm technically in japan so um that could yeah be. i use uh, youtube japan to uh, upload my uh, my videos so the ip m- okay. may have an interference with the algorithm to recommend it to you yeah, yeah YouTube does weight videos based off location. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I'm glad I found your channel, though, because I do like your videos. Uh, also, I wanted to ask you, what happened to your Mega Size RX 782's V-Fin? Oh, uh, it, it was basically like a little war in the in the house. Uh, yeah, I've got one of my own, and he stands on top of my computer. Mm. Yeah, I want to get more um uh, I really want to get a Mega Size Unicorn sometime. I oh, love the I sculpt got- on that. It's like the best That's looking good. unicorn kit. The sculpt is so sharp. That's what I dude. The mega size kits. I'm telling you, people sleep on them. Mm-hmm. 
They have so much surface detail. They, they, I mean, the engineering is very simple. I will say the ratchet joints on the poly caps do not help at all with stability. They're not very poseable, but they are excellent mm. display pieces. Uh, unfortunately, there's only like six kits in the line. You've got the Mega Size Arc 78 II, the Unicorn, the Zaku II, Shar Zaku II, Age 1 Normal, and Age 2 Normal. Mm. They don't really print the age mega sizes anymore, no. but my sponsor did say they could probably get me an, a mega size Zaku soon. Nice. Those look nice. good. Yeah, I'd love to put that up next to my RX-78 too. Alright. Um, 2S, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I was just going to see if we could maybe transition into how we usually, in the podcast, we'll talk about like our current projects we're working on, stuff we're building oh, yeah. right now, mm-hmm. stuff we'll be building soon. So, uh, you see, do you have any current projects you're working on? Oh, well, I'm, I'm working on, I'm uh, about to start finishing up the review for the High Grade Mechanics 1.550th Dendrobium. I'm trying to get that at least out and published before the 144th scale uh, comes in. And then I just finished making a speed build of... I picked up a no-grade 1144th Sandrock um, mm-hmm. of those really old wing kits. It's actually, it's the 2000 reissue that comes with the little tan pilot figure. With the pilot um, figure, yeah. Yes, yeah, it's the 2000 reissue. That kit, um, uh, I'm really excited to tear it apart. It's it's very. I get it, it's a product of its time. I get it, it's old, but it's still shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I, it's a little yeah. charming because of how goofy it looks i mean the proportions are bad the head sculpt is it's uh, i'll send you a picture oh, if you don't know what it looks so, like the head yeah, sculpt s- so fucked up on those old i'll one send one you let me see here's i'll send you the thumbnail i'm going to be using for that you can see the head sculpt on it it just looks so bad um the chin is actually a sticker hmm. the whole their whole oh, red yeah part. it's 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 blindingly obvious in the picture yeah, yeah. I, I will say i think it's cool he comes with an uzi I, I like that, but that's that is the one redeeming quality. They, actually, you know the sculpt for being a, such an old kit, the sculpt in the torso is not bad. It's not that bad. It, well, I mean, now you just got to build the new high grade sand rock. Yeah. Yes. The new one's so and good. That is, the, I'm go, I'm definitely going to be doing that to make a kit. comparison. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have that. Like how I'm going to compare the one five fiftieth dendrobium to the one one forty fourth dendrobium, which the high grade mechanics dendrobium is actually not a bad kit. It has like, it has little color separation, but at the same time, the dendrobium's almost all white, anyways. Uh, and it's such a small kit; is from two thousand and one. But it, it has a lot of surface detail. Like, there's a lot of panel lining opportunities going on there, and it's it's very interesting because it comes with a little one five fiftieth stamen, and it comes with a one five fiftieth Gerbera tetra with its own stand. Mm. Yes, they also did a. Um, they did models like that of the other two mobile armors from Stardust Memory, and I believe between yeah. the three of them, you get one five fiftieth versions of pretty much all the main suits from that OVA. Yeah, you do. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What was the? Uh, There's a, like a large one that has. Um, it's like really tiny arms. I think that can uh, expand, but it has like this really long kind of bottom thruster part. It's like uh the green one. Yeah, oh, I forgot the name of it though. Yeah, Nue Zale or something. Yeah, that one. Yeah, I know that one comes. It's with like a yep. bunch of vowels and no consonants. Yeah, <laughs> I've always seen that one. I think since like two thousand, uh, I think two thousand eleven. I-, I saw it at Yamada Dinky like every single day, and I was just like, "What is this thing?" Let's see. Yeah, those those old high grades, like those, definitely need a lot of uh, tough love. Yes, they do. No, it's not even a high grade. Oh, is it no grade? Yeah, it's a no grade. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they made a hate. Uh, I almost said HG. <laughs> they made an HG mechanics of the uh, new New Zeal, or however you pronounce that. Um, mm-hmm. There is one. Um, they so they have the um, the one five fiftieth of the uh, dendrobium and the new zeal. I'm just, just how I'm going to pronounce it. They have the one one forty fourth of the dendrobium. I'm not sure about the new zeal. And then they actually have, uh, there's a lesser known one four hundredth scale, hmm. uh, GPO three versus new zeal. Okay. That's the Gundam collection one, right? The, um, yes, I think, I think so. Those are the only three that I can think of are the high grade, the mechanics and the Gundam collection one. I think, I don't know what scale Gundam Collection is, but that's that number does sound about right. 
Oh, and then they have the BB Senshi uh, 2000 GPO3 Dendrobium. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I was actually thinking about picking that up just because it looks so... Excuse me. They look so silly. They have it at my uh, sponsor's store, and I I'd settled for the no-grade Sandrock instead. I feel like that was a mistake. Nah, mm-hmm. I, I, I do kind of... I'm a little charmed by the little sand rock and how goofy he looks i don't regret picking him up and especially like i got him for four bucks because um yeah i guess that's not bad yeah like uh my sponsor the the deal they've cut with me is basically uh on the, it's like an active sponsorship it's very it's very laid back it's very casual there's not really like terms and conditions we just kind of discussed what they'd like from me and what i want from them what they're able to offer me starting off and they said um they said starting next week they're gonna get me the Master Grade Kyrios, which is a, it's a little late to the punch, but you know we just struck this deal and they said that that kit's that kit's just coming in next week just because it was coming through the U.S. supply chain, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't wait said, to get my hands on one of those. It looks like such oh, a cool no, kit. It looks so good. Uh, but let's see. They said starting next week or the week after they're going to start doing. Uh, they start going to do direct imports of special SKUs uh, directly from their Japanese distributor instead of going through U.S. supply chains. So that whenever th- he said uh, he said whenever there's a new Bandai release, he'll email me, tell me what's up, and if I I'll tell him if I'm interested. And whenever his supplier in Japan gets their hands on it that same day, he's gonna have it shipped out and in my hands a month. At uh, at best, he's gonna have it in my hands a month before it's available anywhere for retail anywhere in the U.S. So I'm gonna have that kit in my hands, built and probably reviewed before anyone else in the country has even gotten to touch it. Mm. Yeah, that's gonna give you a really good edge. Actually, back when I used yeah. to review kits, I would um, I'd like EMS ship them from like Hobby Link Japan or something so I could get yeah. that early edge. And then I stopped yeah. doing it because I really wasn't motivated to review kits anymore because I kind of got mm. to the point where I was like, well, okay. There's only so much I can say about this. The articulation's the same, you know. The detail's good. The design's good. If you like the design, get the kit. You know, like there's not a whole lot you can say after a certain point. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm just like in a way. It's like once I build something, I feel like I have to talk about it, and that's the best way to do it. So it's very fun for me. You're also a lot uh, newer to the hobby than I was by the time I got burned out on reviews. That's true. Yeah, I've only been doing it for about a year and a half. Uh, so I still have yeah, a lot we'll to learn. Yeah, we'll see how you feel in five years. <laughs> yeah, I still have a lot. Well, it'll, it'll also depend where I am in five years. Who can say what the future holds, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, uh, I don't know. I just I love talking about this stuff after I build it. That's why I prefer to do reviews on kits that are freshly built. So the kit's fresh in my mind. I haven't lost any of the accessories, and I can give an accurate review on it of how I feel after building it. Um Oh, I totally lost my train. Oh, yeah, like my sponsor, they were saying anything we can't get to you um, like a month in advance, you can pick up from our store for like a 50% discount. Or, well, it was like not 50%. It was around 50% because they're giving it to me uh, at wholesale costs. So it they said it was like it was like 43% of the retail price, I believe mm-hmm. that the figure was. So that's a good that's a good discount on stuff. Oh, that's like if, if they're not able to get anything into me and I need something to review which right now I don't necessarily need anything that's not new to review because I've got that whole backlog if you watched my shopping video which I know uh, Soundwave did um, yeah for a channel of your size that's a really good sponsor deal I know it's it's crazy and the best thing is is that well I'm happy to be working with uh, a business that I have already been a fan of for about a year they're really the only place on this side of the state that supplies uh, me with Gunpla aside from Barnes & Noble which has like a Master Grade, Sinenju Stein, and some Gundam Converged figures. Um, they're really the best I could ask for because not only do I already like and want to support and genuinely help their business, but I like the people who work there. I like the people who own it. They're all great people. They're nice people. Um, and they're local. So, you know, once that stuff comes in from Japan, I don't have to have it sent to me. Once it comes in, day one, I can drive out there and just go get it. So that that puts kits in my hands really fast. Um, they're willing to, you know, basically give me kits for half the price. They said something along the lines of if you, if we're trying to get a kit in your hands and it's like 20 bucks or so retail, we'll just give it to you for free because really 10 bucks is like negligible. And they were saying, you know, uh, they saw my video. The day that I uploaded the video of me going shopping was actually the day that I went uh, in to talk with the owner about just more details than we had 
uh, discussed over email. Um, and he, I, I wanted to upload that as a proof of concept to be like, this is kind of how my advertisements for you guys will look. And he liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was yeah, actually it was a well-made very su- video. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. I had my friend come along in video. He was kind of not really happy about it, but I convinced him to do it. Um, I was really surprised though because that day that we filmed that, I had that was the day I had gotten in contact with the owner. I had sent him one email basically saying like, you know, this is my name. This is what I do. I like your company. Let's see if we can work together if you're open to it. I didn't even send him my uh, YouTube. He found me on his own, started watching my videos, and he said, um, he said, I love your videos. He said, we'd love to work with you. Um, what are your what are your plans for partnership? That was the first email I got back. It was actually his brother because they co-own the place. Um, and the the one I had emailed was on vacation, but he's like, let's work together. I was like, hell yeah, I'm I'm into it. You know, mm-hmm. right away, right off the bat, it happened way faster than I thought it was going to. I thought they're gonna be like, your channel's too small. Uh, we're not looking to partner. You know, um, I it really yeah. went as good as I could have hoped, and uh, even beyond that, like the guy who owns the store, he said, I'm actually friends with the guy who owns USA Gundam store. And I sent him your videos, and he really likes your content. And the only reason that mm-hmm. you're not going to be sponsored it's by him is a good because balance, we though. would like you all to ourselves, and we just don't want you accepting sponsorships from our direct competitors. Um, but he he said he said we we he really liked your videos, and he said that if you could get kits in your hands uh, early, like new releases, that your channel would explode. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, damn, that's some pretty high praise. <laughs> I'd still recommend doing more kind of like non-review videos as well, so mm-hmm. you're not completely relying on just doing the reviews. Yeah, that's what I, like I feel like that's a good way to break up the not really. I don't find it monotonous, but it's a good way to change things up. Like that's why I did the haul video, not only because yeah, like exactly. I wanted to com- I wanted to announce and commemorate the sponsorship and show people what it's like, uh, you know, in in the store and what the shopping experience is like, um, and. Just because, like, I was planning on making that video already, something like that. And it's just, you know, like you said, non-review content. It's nice to have, like, a balance between that. So you're not just doing the same thing. Yeah, and so uh, sometimes sometimes competitors can actually, uh, you know, have agreements in terms of yeah. uh, what their, you know, sponsor, sponsor-y uh, reviews. So, like, I, I review mostly just for uh, Hobby Link Japan. I'm not Hobby Link Japan. Right. Well, new type. New type. But yep. for the non-Gundam stuff, that's Hobby Link Japan. Because they, right. you know, they usually have those things in stock. Whereas New Type, they pretty much specialize in um, Gumpla and then maybe uh, some SH. Um, no, not SH. SH figure figure arts, I- Monster Arts. No, what's yeah. the other one? Figure Eye. Not standard. really. No. Yeah, Figure Eye Standard. Yeah, they, they'll. They don't really delve those. into like the Kotobukiya stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. That too. Oh yeah, the mostly Galactic just because apparently Kotobukiya's U.S. distribution is kind of a pain to work with. Yeah, um, it, it really is. Um, let's see. Uh, Galactic Toys carries Kotobukiya stuff. Like, they have the Kotobukiya Zoids, uh, in stock. They have, um, I don't know, you, you, you guys know Frame Arms Girls, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But they have yes. that, um, they have that Ludens Girl, the, uh, Kojima Productions one. And yeah. they were asking me, they're like, you want to review something like this? I was like, hell yeah, I'd love to review the Ludens. Mm-hmm. So, so actually, cool that sounds there. like a good way to transition into uh, what I've been working on recently because I, just a few days ago, actually built a Frame Arms Girl. And oh, nice. that was my first experience with nice. uh, any of Kotobukiya's models. Um, it was the white Gorai Kai. Um, the, the Gorai was the first model they did in the line. And it was okay, but it had some issues. The joints and like the build quality wasn't super great because Kotobukiya hadn't really done any like kind of Mecha Girl kits prior to this. And yeah. her arm cannon was really big and heavy, so it kind of weighed the arm down. So mm-hmm. they made a revised version like 15, 20 kits into the line after they kind of got the hang of it that had a little bit different armor, smaller gun, better joints and stuff. And it's a really nice looking kit. Um, it's really solid. The, I've heard that the plastic on Kotobukiya's models is kind of different from Bandai's. Um, yeah. This didn't feel too bad, though. It didn't really feel all that different, either. I wasn't. I was kind of expecting it to maybe feel, like, really dense or something, but it just it just kind of felt like normal model kit plastic. Um, this is one of the first kits that I've actually done water slide decals with, just because the blank white armor looked really plain without them, so I hit this with a little bit of Gundam gray lining marker and put the water slides on. And it mostly turned out really well. Um, yeah, the weird sh- thing about this kit... Oh, go ahead. Oh, so you should slide a picture of that uh, into my server so I can take a look of it. Uh, at yeah, it. hang on. Let me see if I can... F- Ooh, let me see. You, know, oh, you don't I have to do it right now. One. You do it like later. No, it's okay. I'm just getting to the right 
channel where I think I posted it, and I'll I'll kind of work my way up to it while I'm talking about the kit. So yeah, oh. it's a really it's a pretty neat model. Um, it's got good articulation. It's good build quality. Um, it does. I would say it sh it does need a little bit of painting, um, not necessarily as a requirement, but more just it looks really nice if you do a little bit of work to it. Um, yeah. This was my first time working with water slides, and I'm not like a hundred percent happy with the water slides in this kit because I did find some of them were like not quite right sized for the model. Like that one that's kind of like the hexagon shape thing on her visor the yeah. tips of that just barely extend past the edge of the part and yep. it really annoys the crap out of me um i'm that's not a, sure really white, what you're supposed to do about sticker? that um no these are water slide decals oh okay that, yeah that's what i'm so like, like with a sticker you can like just kind of shave that down i don't know what you're mm -hmm. really supposed to do with a water slide in that kind of situation uh, maybe well, water Clark slides some light on that water slides are uh, they tear kind of easily at least the Bandai ones do. The Bandai ones tear easily, so I assume you could just take like an Exacto to that and trim along the edge. Yeah, I might give that a shot. I didn't have any issues with these tearing, thankfully. Um, kind of annoyingly, I did find that the there were some direct contradictions between the decal, like the diagram where they show you where to put all the decals, and where the decals are actually supposed to go. Yeah. Because that, that marking with where it says go rye on her shoulder, which you might not even be able to see in the picture because some genius decided to give the white kit white decals, but there is a thing that says go rye on her shoulder. And after getting it in place on the shoulder pad, I realized that where it tells you to put it in the manual is completely different from where it's shown on the artwork. And that kind of bugged me because I wanted my kit to look like the art. Damn, yeah. I know. There's like, you know, it's always weird when there's discrepancies between the artwork and like what's actually going on. Um, something I mm -hmm. noticed is like you see the Jim Sniper to the master grade that came out, what 2019, right? Like last year. Yeah. Something I think like it was. that. Yeah. 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 So you see, you look at the animation and you see those little hole vent, whatever call it, like the little, the little circles, oh, the gray dots. Yeah. 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 It's like in Bandai painted official Bandai painted imagery. They're gray and the animation they're blue. I pointed that out in my review of the Jim Sniper too. I'm like, uh, what's going on here? Which is the right one? You want to make you want it yeah, to be it's one of those weird inconsistencies that you accurate. see with old designs. Mm -hmm. It kind of just leaves it up to you. Right. Sometimes I think only once have I ever seen, and this was with the Master Grade Victory Gundam. They actually included both the parts to make the animation version and to make the model version. So it that's, came with like alternate cool. white and blue parts for the areas that were different colors between the designs. That's cool. Yeah, but the gore eyes, the gore eyes, pretty good. Um, the water slide decals were decent overall. I would say the worst ones were the ones for the kind of striped pant pattern on her panties because mm -hmm. this kit has some pre-painted parts like the face, the eyes, the mouth, and like the blush on the cheeks. That's all painted. But then there's like the striped pattern on her panties, which is could have been pre-painted. It could have the way they kind of could have laid this out would have yeah. probably been better than using water slide decals because obviously the shape of them is very curvy and has lots of yeah. valleys and hills and not something you can really put a water slide over i did it, my best yeah. um they did recommend to make like these little incisions along the side so it kind of grips kind of around the edges without folding and it kind of works but it also kind of really doesn't um i just slathered some mark softener over it and just screwed around with it until i got it to look okay but yeah. i'm really not happy with how it looks well, at least it's not the sticker style decals from something like the Luna Maria Hawks Gunner Zaku Warrior, where they have you putting those sticker decals all over those curved yeah. surfaces. I, I, I just throw those away. Yeah, that was. I don't even. Yeah, I when I decaled up mine, I didn't even put any of the ones on the curved parts. I just stick to those flat surfaces. And if there's this decal that I yeah. really like that they're saying to like put on the shoulder pad or something, I'll just put it somewhere where it actually works. Yeah. I think my, my first experience decaling a kit was with a Verka kit, so that took mm -hmm. me an entire day. I did the high new Gundam Verka, and I did everything but the, the, the ones for the, yeah. the funnels because those ones are horrible. They go over like four, four or five different surfaces, mm -hmm. and it's really just like impossible to make them line up. But everything else was fine. I um, I had like one of the ones that goes along the length of the fuel tanks. I think that yeah, one tore. Yeah, the worst tore, part about doing those I got is, it back is together. like they say like um. Doing those, yeah, and then the... if you are constantly oh, moving, like if they're not going to be permanently on the shelf, those uh, decals just like get scratched off so easily. Yeah. Yeah, I did top coat it. 
which um, went pretty well actually. I just used like Rust Oleum two X, mm-hmm. uh, like a, a rattle can, and that that turned out really well. Um, but I don't nice. know how well that'll hold up. Uh, I don't really move around that often. I have moved twice since I started building Gunpla. Um, I'm planning on at least hopefully I'd like to move out and get my own place sometime soon. Um, but it really all depends on how things go in the next few months, I guess. Yeah, so more recently, even than the Gorai, I actually just last night finished building the high-grade Penelope, the very, very large model. Oh, yeah. I, and, that's been on my radar for a while. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, like, super hyped for it, but I had... It was kind of a situation where I was like, well, I've built pretty much everything else that's come out this year. I might as well build the Penelope as well. Yeah, so I wasn't, I like, you. super into it, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, I will say that I like yeah. the Odysseus Gundam just on its own a lot mm-hmm. more than oh, the Penelope. Too. Yeah, it's the thing is though, almost all of the kit's color comes from the armor. So if you just display right. the Odysseus, it's really plain looking. Mm-hmm. And it's like so I kind of started. Oh, go ahead. I was say I like I feel the same with you about that kit. Like I'm not like seen up on the shelf. Like damn, I really want to take that kit home, you know. But it's mm-hmm. like. I would like to have it on my shelf, but there's so many other things I just would much rather have that when I get in the store and I see everything, compared to everything else that I could buy, the Penelope's just not very high on my list. Maybe after I watch Hathaway's Flash when it comes out, um, my opinion might change on it. I might be like, God damn, I need to go buy a fucking Penelope gun. It just looks a little too plain. Yeah. Like, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. It has it's... a lot of surface detail. I'll say like it's, it's mostly white in a, in a lot of areas. I, and I think it needs like some uh, some yeah. light gray. Or even dark gray to uh, to break up the white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got there's like actually an alternate color, color scheme for it. There's like an alternate oh, color scheme for it I've seen on the wiki that I believe was Katoki's design, which actually has a little more color separation on the yeah. Odysseus itself. There's like some red on the abdomen, the sides, the legs are blue. I think it's a nicer looking color yeah. scheme overall. As it yeah. stands, though, um, if you're like like you see here and you're not like super into the design. I would say don't really bother with it. It's not, like, an amazing kit. But if you yeah. do love the design, it's pretty cool. I bet you Hathaway's Flash is going to come out and you're not going to be able to find a Penelope probably Gundam not. almost anywhere. <laughs> so I'm probably going to get mine just for the sake of being able to have it after that shit comes out. Um, but yeah, imagine, you, I still you need said, to panel line mine. Um, yeah, I did, it definitely would I did kind of end line. up modifying it just because when it was fully armored, I just don't like how it looks at all. It's just it looks like a chicken. It messy. looks like a chicken. Yeah, and first of all, it comes with like this stand. Mm-hmm. The stand is not really sturdy enough to hold it with everything attached, and oh, because God, of no. the way the stand's designed, you can't really even attach like a normal action base connector, and it doesn't come mm-hmm. with an adapter, so you can't even use it with a more durable action base. Yeah. So now I'm not really knowledgeable about like Hathaway's Flash stuff, like the Penelope. That's like that's like a mobile armor, it's no, right? It's a kind of thing it's a mobile it's, yeah it's a mobile the suit still okay. you could argue that the the it, penelope like armor. unit that like separates is a mobile armor on its own but it's still okay. considered a mobile suit i was just saying because it just kind of seems like a mobile armor to me that doesn't really work like it doesn't really i don't know why it's just never really gelled well with me like you know the dendrobium it's like it, the dendrobium works the neo Zeon works for me the the new zeal works for me, but it's like when I look at the Penelope Gundam, it just looks like a tiny little Gundam, and they're trapped a bunch of on a, under a bunch of shit that was just thrown on top of it. It's one of a handful of mobile suits that very carefully treads the line between mm-hmm. mobile suit and mobile armor. Yeah, it's just I the design has never it's never failed to uh, it's never succeeded in capturing my interest really. Well, what I found made me like it a lot more was removing the front skirt armor. And then okay. taking out the tail fin from the back. Because the way it's designed, you can kind of just take that big red kind of horizontal fin completely mm-hmm. out. And you still have the more vertical stabilizer. And you still have the thrusters in the back. So it doesn't look like anything's missing. But yeah. you just don't have this big stupid chunk of plastic sticking out the back of the model. And once yeah. I did that, I actually found myself liking the Penelope a lot more. Hmm. Well, if I if I ever pick up a kit up, I will... Uh... I'll try that. And you said there's a Katoki design of that. I doubt we'd ever get like a like a Katoki, you know, like a Verka of that because of how big it is already. But I'm well, curious to see what we kind of like. do with the uh, the signature. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the design I'm talking about was from yeah. the Ka signature line, which is like this line of figurines yeah. that Katoki did. 
Yeah, he okay. did a lot. Like, it, I mean, it's pretty much um, all UC. I don't think there's any non-UC in that line. But it's a... Mm-hmm. No, there was like a non-UC spinoff of it, I think. There was like a Cosmic oh, really? Era spinoff. Huh. Yeah, I don't remember what it was called, but it's like okay. Cosmic something or other. Cosmic Era is Seed, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that's going to yeah, be Seed. I, th- I thought so. Oh, you know what? Something I've always wondered. Why is there just straight up Zaku's in Seed? Uh, Does that ever explain? Because Seed was uncreative and did whatever it thought could yeah. make the most profit. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> seed, seed is kind of like a um, a retelling of um, you know early UC in a way. Like It, it has the same kind of vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, Seed, Seed Mobile Suits designs, fucking slap. I love them. Oh, yeah, Seed has yeah. some of the best Gundams. And the and Seed th- Master Grades are, like, almost all amazing. Oh, uh, I just picked up the Providence, and it comes with the little, like, Dragoon effect part. Um, yeah, that's like one yeah. of the only master grades where they actually give you the effect parts you need. I know it wasn't. I was like, I thought that was like P Bandai. It usually is. Mm-hmm. It almost always is. Yeah, yeah, right. Oh man, and speaking of like speaking of Verka, I'm sure you guys have already beaten that dead horse. That's the Wing Zero Custom EW yeah. Verka already. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh that's yeah, the one that everyone melted over. down over. Yeah, I'm 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 a little excited for it just because I'm gonna be able to get my hands on it in October, mm-hmm. thanks to my sponsor. So I'll have it like I'll probably have that review out like maybe a week or two after I get that, but it'll definitely be before anyone else is able to see it. So like I'll be able to provide that first look and we'll we'll know if it's actually any good or not. I am I'm a little excited because the Wing Zero mm-hmm. did need a 2.0, but I'm a little bummed that it wasn't something like the Atlas or uh, the yeah. the G Self. Oh, I would love a Verka Atlas. That yes. is like a big, big want for me. Well, speaking of the G self, since we were talking about like I'm not trying to make this dragon for too long. I know you guys were talking about transitioning into like how you usually ended like probably <laughs> 20 minutes ago. Um, but speaking oh, that's of the G self, we'll go as long as we need. I think Bandai they just reprinted the G self perfect pack, the high grade. Um, and I know yeah, they reprint like, that a lot. Yeah, because like uh, up until recently, I was looking for it online, and people were only selling it for Jeez. like ninety dollars or something like that. And uh, then I went every to the two store. to three months, Bandai does a little reprint of it, a little burst of G Self Perfect Pack, and they immediately get snapped up, mm-hmm. and the value skyrockets. And then Bandai reprints them, and it goes down. It's like a constant cycle where there really yeah. does seem to be yeah. a lot of demand for it. And weirdly, yeah, like, it's also for some reason the only G Self or the only G Reco kit that Bandai really ever reprints. Right, I mean, like, I personally, I love the G-Self design. It's one of my favorite designs, like, in, in all of Gundam. I don't know why, I just love it. Um, and I really was bummed about not being able to get my hands on a perfect pack. Then I went to Galactic Toys, I went to their store, they had, like, four of them. I was like, holy shit. And I was like, they must have reprinted I still want to get a got, perfect pack, it's such a cool yeah. design. They got it on their website if you want to order one. It's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. Right now, I think they still have them in stock. Yeah, I might grab one through new type. Yeah, they probably have them too since they just restocked. Um. Yeah, let me check right now. Actually. Yeah. New I'll check. On, I'll check on Galactic Toys and see if they got those yet. Let's see. It, da, da, da. Yeah, I think. Jeez, um. So. What was the the Mac knife? I think they reprinted that one. Uh, like last year. Cause I've been seeing that one uh, heavy on the shelves. Well, that's good because it does seem like some of the more obscure stuff from G Reco, like the Gion yeah. and the Cat Sith. Um, some of those are just, you can't really get them anymore. And yeah. like, to be fair, they aren't like super popular designs, but if you, for some reason, want that kit, I mean, good luck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Galactic Toys has the, uh, G self with the perfect pack. They have the G self with the atmospheric pack and they have the GLs from, uh, build divers re-rise. Okay. Nice. So, uh, Crow, what have you been working on recently? Oh, you already know it is Metabots month. So. Um, oh, I actually. Oh, yeah, that's channel. right. I've actually uh, primed the gun nose already, so today I'm gonna start doing the shading, um, and I'll try and get a couple of layers of paint. But I don't think I'm gonna get to the uh, the detailing and the weathering today. I'll, I'll probably be a tomorrow project. Uh, but I'm also. Yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that that kit's not going for too much in the secondary market because that does not look like a thirty dollar model. Oh, not at all. It, I don't think I've ever seen it go higher than like thirty dollars, uh, even on eBay. And if people are selling it for more than that, then they're crazy. Yeah, that's a super basic kit. Yeah. Really looks about on par, I would say, with like the petite guys or the Haros, kind of. Yeah, and pretty much everything is going to be on a ball joint, so it's like, it's not the best kit, but it still has a decent range of movement, and it can achieve what you want it to do. It's 
the ankles is probably the worst thing. Like you're not getting any kind of good side bends. Um, but the Meta B and the um, uh, Scissor Head, those two are actually still on sale over at um, Amiami for like twenty five bucks. So it's like you need to get them now before they sell uh, sell out, and then yeah. they go back to like one hundred and fifty dollars. But yeah, uh, yeah. So Crow loves Metabots. I really couldn't give less of a shit. I'm kind of <laughs> wondering where you stand on that UC. Never heard of it. Yeah, that sounds about right. That's all right. I, I know it's a very obscure franchise, but I think it's making its comeback this year. Yeah, I'll I'll look into some of your Metabots videos and maybe I'll do some research on my own and see how I how I feel about it. Usually, something that ropes me into new franchises is the mm-hmm. series designs, but I'm willing to overlook it if I don't really like it and give the series a chance. Like uh, like Mazinger or, just, or like the old Super Robot shows. Yeah. Like I don't really like necessarily like the Mazinger design, but I still want to watch Mazinger one day. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever? I'm sure you guys have at least heard of like um the Big O, not 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 the O, oh, yeah. but like the Big O. Like yeah, I the watch show that. with the. Uh, so yeah, that it? was a that was a good. Anime. I did. It's it just it's too much like um, it it felt like Batman animated, but with way yeah. it, took, it took itself way too serious that. for a giant yeah. robot show. It's, it's like a it's like a super giant robot show, but it's also isn't it like kind of like film noir? Yeah, yeah. very sort of, like yeah. black and white, uh, grayish colors. So it's like it's like a serious tone with fantastical elements that doesn't really gel well with you. I mean. I, I can't remember the story. I just know uh, I knew it came on Toonami. So yep. the story itself and characters are probably super well done, but it's the aesthetic of it. Mm-hmm. I don't like the big O design. I don't like those like big giant hulking arms. It yeah, it, it just doesn't vibe with me. Now I will say it does remind me of memories from my childhood of watching G One Transformers, mm-hmm. uh, like the Transformers. Like it was just called the Transformers, like that original cartoon. Yeah, the original series. Yeah. Now I I don't remember the name of the Decepticon because like I literally haven't been into Transformers for years and years and years. Um, but it was one of the first episodes where they're having trouble like with a dam or something, and there's like a Transformer with piston arms, and there's a Decepticon. He's like, uh, yeah, that's uh, he's Rumble. Like, Rumble. Yeah, it was Rumble. Mm-hmm. He's, he reminds me of Rumble. The cassette. That's why right? I like the big old design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the cassette. Yes. I like I don't know why I always just had visible like I just had like a vivid memory of that scene of Rumble just fucking it up on the on the uh, waterbed or like the the bed of the lake or whatever you want to call it waterbed is what what am I talking about is like, in the bottom the of the, the river yeah. he was fucking it up down there mm-hmm. I'm so tired I wasn't even like I didn't even catch that yeah Oh god I'm tired too man I I was on a buzz like all day and I'm just I'm just chilling right now. I think my friend's... He's probably halfway conked out, out behind me. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to make sure he's awake to watch at least a couple episodes of Double O to see how he likes it. Maybe I can convince him to get into actually building some of the models. But we'll see. Yeah, I did also send some metabots in the chat. Okay, I see that. What, what's like the premise of that show? Uh, so basically it's Pokemon, but with robots. It's okay, like I can, exactly I can Pokemon. <laughs> I can dig that. How yeah, even, um how long did it run for? Like how much is there? How much media is there? The first season I believe is about fifty eight episodes, and then there was a season two which had like I want to say forty something episodes, uh, but in total it's like ninety like ninety six episodes. All right. So I, I would I would recommend watching it with the uh, the mind that it's kind of coming off the coattails um, of Pokemon, Pokemon. yeah, because yeah. even the first uh, games of Metabots had the same exact design of Pokemon in terms of, yeah. like, characters, buildings, environment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Yeah, whenever Crow describes this, it just makes me think of this old game for the GameCube called Custom Robo. Mm, I've never heard of that. Speaking oh, of I... GameCube, though, I was actually going to get It was basically my... Metabots, but on the GameCube. Uh, I was actually going to get my GameCube out tonight and replay my favorite game from my childhood, and still one of my favorite games today is uh, Pac-Man World 2. I was going to play through that with my friend. I finally found the disc for that. I got it off of eBay because I sold my copy a long time ago, and I'm really happy to replay it and not on an emulator. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's a good I'm sure it's a good game, but whenever you say that, it just makes, makes me think of that really shitty stage from Smash Bros. Ultimate. Was there a Pac-Man World 2 stage in Smash Bros. Ultimate? No, it was called like Pac-Land or something like that. It oh. looked like it was made in MS Paint. 
<laughs> no, I really, I just, I love Pac- Pac-Man World 2's, like, art style and the level progression, and it's just, it's very, it's probably my nostalgia goggles, but I do love that game. Hang on, I gotta send you a picture of Pac-Man. Okay. Uh, so you can appreciate the literal worst stage in Smash Bros. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Oh my god, that's that's in Smash oh Bros. That's Ultimate? a real stage in a current gen video game. Holy shit. I could have made that in five minutes. It and it's a scrolling me. stage. It it it's like scrolls through and there's like trees and stuff and you sometimes get stuck on the stumps and get blasted off the edge because it won't stop scrolling and it's really annoying to play on. <laughs> Alright, hold on. I'm gonna do something real quick and I'm gonna send it into the chat. That reminds me of the uh the S N E S game. I I fucking hated that Pac Man game so much. Where you I had, think like, this the is based off that SNES game. Well, I, I, I would argue that the, um, the SNES game had better graphics than that. <laughs> it probably did. But it's like you use a slingshot and you kind of like direct. Well, you, you you cause things to happen in the environment of Pac-Man, and Pac-Man reacts to it. I was like, I hated that game so much. Yeah. Pac-Man World Two is not perfect, but it is a very fun game. Except there's a couple times where the game can be pretty bullshit but never so bad that I can't beat the, like I, I could sit down and beat the game in one sitting right now mm-hmm. nice Let's see, I'm almost done with my thing uh, what Smash Bros character should I draw Sonic with Sonic? Sonic okay I'll draw Sonic I'll do a very quick rendition of Sonic so we can get this just draw uh, a circle and fill with blue Okay, um, this is the, let me see, I gotta add a little bit of color. Uh, purple background, I think, would be good. Ooh, Kirby needs some color. Let's give Kirby some color. I think he's, how is he being filled by that? That doesn't make any sense. Um, so Kirby. you sent your Sonic in the chat, and then I'll send mine that I made back when we talked about the Sonic <laughs> movie. <laughs> oh god, that horrid monstrosity. <laughs> I'm almost done with mine. Uh, I'm I'm actually this is my portfolio for uh, I'm I'm going to work with Nintendo on the next Smash Bros game. This is my uh, submission for the new Final Destination stage, based off of that Pack World thing that made it into a current gen game. That's the new Final Destination. <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> oh, amazing! I love it. That's a wonderful drawing. The style of your thing reminds me of that uh, that YouTuber that does uh, like terminal. little mini animations with the fat burbs. Yeah, ter- uh, terminal oh. um, something. I know. Yeah, who that sounds about. familiar. That um, that Sonic that you drew reminds me of how I envisioned Sonic as I was watching uh, the Sonic movie for the third time, getting blackout drunk in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that movie was that movie was better than it should have been. It was. I can't believe it was like one of the only actual movies released this year to the box office. Yep. That's hilarious. It's yeah, been, it's been like that one was for the so last long. movie I saw in theaters. Mm-hmm. Me too. Uh, anything else to us before we start uh, wrapping it all up? Um, I mean, unless you have any other projects you want to talk about besides the Metabot thing. It's yeah. This whole month's just pretty much Metabots, but. I, you know what, since th- this is later in the video, and I, you know some people kind of start tuning out, so the ones that actually stuck it all the way through the end, I actually got the Ava Shinkan Lion, um, and that's coming in the mail next week. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. That thing looks super cool. It, 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 like, I don't like the Shinkan Lion uh, Moderoi kits because they are horrible. However, the aesthetic of the Evangelion Cross uh, Shinkan Lion, it looks so good. And it has the spear of um, what is Longinus. It? Yeah, Longinus. So, yeah. oh, oh my God, it's just it's perfect. That's cool. I can't wait to see it. I'm trying to get my sponsor to get their hands on a, a real grade unit double O for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, if not, then I'm just gonna have them get me the unit two when it comes out. Oh, you talking about the uh, the unit one? Uh, uh, no, oh, the, the, yeah, the, the unit one came out. The, but they the said Ava, the orange Ava. The, yeah, the oh, orange yeah, Ava. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's, people, that comes out this month, so they may not be able to get me like an early copy. They said if they did get me a copy, though, they'd get me the um, the DX version with the the launch platform and the uh, the whatever rifle. I haven't I haven't seen uh, I've I've watched all of Evangelion and I've watched End of Evangelion. I haven't seen the rebuilds and I can barely remember shit from when I did watch it. I would highly I I just uh, rewatched them about three weeks ago. Like mm-hmm. I, I watched the entire series, uh, Rebirth, End, and then the uh, the rebuild series. 
Okay. It is so good. Like I, oh, I'm yeah, I love it. I just have a really bad memory. Like uh, I always recommend tethering, um, watching a different like franchise or series. Tether mm-hmm. that with an explanation, a uh, YouTube video, like someone who's okay. going into the deep dive um, parts of the series. That yeah. usually helps solidify my memory. Okay. Yeah, I see. Well, sorry yeah, the, to go off on another tangent. I oh, thought you guys, I, I know you guys oh, were no, trying to like fine. wrap it up yeah. a little. Like, I would love to uh, do another one, and if you want to come on, uh, definitely more than welcome, and just talk about Evangelion. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to do that. I, I really appreciate you guys, you know, reaching out to me and having me on this podcast. It means a lot, and I was happy to yeah, do Yeah, I'm going to have Demarath on the show before we do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I had a great time tonight, and I really appreciate it. I'd love to come on again if you guys ever would want to have me. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah cool, absolutely. cool talking to you. Yeah, it's cool talking to you guys, too. You guys are You guys are nice dudes. I appreciate it. Glad Thank to you. make your acquaintance, and hopefully, you know, we can talk more, work together in the future if you guys want to. Do whatever. Just oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Discord is definitely the the easiest place to just talk and share ideas and all that. Yeah, like I I don't know I I I don't really know how like Gunpla collabs would work, but I had. Do you guys know Gunpla Network? Yeah. Yeah, like Gunpla Network yeah, found yeah. my they found my videos and they sent me an email saying like we really like your stuff. Do you want to collaborate? And I said. Not right now because I'm working off. I'm working stuff out with the sponsorship still, but uh, in the future for sure. Mm-hmm. Usually, what they do is they just, if they want to collaborate with you, usually it just takes the form of you making a review and they post it on their channel. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll, I'll reach out to them um, after because I'm, I'm still like focusing on uh, getting getting a first first getting a video backlog to have in case I fall back on production, and then working out um the schedule of getting kits from my sponsor and just making more reviews and then i'll probably be in a place where i could uh collaborate with others mm-hmm. yeah, right sure all right Tush, you want to go ahead and uh start signing us out sign us out yeah so thank you for listening to this episode of the crowcast um if you want to check out Crosama's channel you're on it right now if for some reason you're watching this on some other platform it is the Crosama on youtube i am second sound wave from channel 2s there will be a link in the video description if you're watching on youtube um if you're watching on some other platform you're screwed i guess <laughs> um and then our guest today uh uc gundam if he has anything to plug now would be the time to do so um if you want to follow me on twitter or subscribe on youtube my name is the same uc gundam y-o-u-s-e-e-g-u-n-d-a-m that's my twitter handle that is my youtube as well i have a kiss, uh, custom url so you can find it by just searching that um that's it just twitter and youtube that's all i really do besides discord where i just talk to my friends and the people in my server and if you want to join my server right. uh links on my channel and uh we'll have a link to uc gundam's channel in the description down below so you can go ahead and check it out um but yeah thanks everyone for listening and we'll see y'all on the next podcast see you later take care guys <laughs>